Hello, in this video we're going to learn how to create motion blur effect that looks realistic. For the most of the time when you will be seeing your ArcVis artists and uh, friends doing the same as job as you, uh, a lot of them will be using um, motion blur as an add-on effect to their work. Sometimes it's going to be for the better, especially if there are photographers. You can see that those images, those photographs, they look amazing. And you can see that those people add a lot of life to those interiors. But in some cases, um, some artists are going to go ahead and create this kind of motion blur effect that looks a little bit like flash going from one spot to another or some kind of um, unreasonable or unexplained streaks of light that don't make any sense while also um, people uh, getting into warp speed for no reason just I don't know it looks like that person is vibrating and well also that this is the most common mistake that you will see with a lot of artists well what we can see in this case is that uh, whenever you actually create motion blur the motion is not only going to be related to the current position of the object but it's going to take in um in calculation the whole the route that it has to, had to travel this is due to the fact that motion blur is an effect that really is only about the light and the exposure of the film of your camera upon the light that shines through it so imagine that those people walking from uh, point a to point b uh, they do not really do anything in particular w what really happens here is that the camera allows itself to see the image for a little bit longer so it in reality it really grabs all of those frames and they uh, pretty much just imprint this movement what is a common element of motion blur in a realistic manner is that you're going to see this zombie like movement which is natural uh, it is because we when we are moving uh, some elements of our posture are going to uh, look a little bit different for example this woman when she's going to move please uh, please pay attention to her legs. You're going to notice that one of the legs is staying a little bit longer on the ground pretty much in one place. That is why when looking at this kind of uh, images, uh, this is 100% correct. You can see that this one leg stayed a little bit longer and that is why we can see this person. But why do we actually see motion blur? How is it made in 3ds Max? Because yes, it is possible in photographs and sometimes it's going to be even better to see it as, uh, as a still frame to not have anything blurred out. But uh, well, we're going to have to jump into new window in 3ds Max and simply talk a little bit about uh, short animations and how to create keyframes. So first thing first, we're going to create a box. It's going to be a regular box that we're going to place on the left side of our screen. Now to create any kind of animation or motion for it, um, typically you will think that we need to move it from one place to another. And yes, that is correct. But how do we actually animate it? In 3ds Max, you've got this option of clicking auto key. You can also press N on your keyboard and you're going to see that your viewport is now highlighted red instead of yellow. And we've got this red line showing here. This means that the auto key is on. So whichever or whatever uh, changes you're going to make outside zero uh, keyframe, it's going to be baked into animation of that um, of that object. For example, we can now move the slider to frame 60, or in your case, it's going to be 100, and move this object from position um, the starting position to the end position. So let's turn off auto key and let's see how it works. So as you can see, it looks pretty nice. If I now play this, you're going to also be able to notice that the movement isn't really that co uh, consistent. That is because we've got those default in and out tangents. Uh, so those are just curves for the movement. So let's actually see how they behave and how they work in 3ds Max. So 
each of those tangents that we can see here has a little bit different options or different properties. And we're going to now quickly see how they work. Okay, so as you can see, all of them have a little bit different or let's say peculiar type of movement. Although all of those teapots were moved only on Z axis, um, sorry, X axis, you can actually see that all of them make this movement uh, a little bit differently. Uh, we've got this kind of movement, which is just a step movement. So uh, we're going to have our object teleporting. Uh, during the playback, it didn't really move because it only moves for the frame 60 and frame 0. So it pretty much teleports. Um, what we're going to try to use is this linear option. So we're going to pick our animation and simply select it to linear. And now when we will be creating some kind of animation, for example, for our box, we're going to right click here. So let's select this keyframe, uh, delete the key, and we're going to delete all of them. Now we want this linear movement. So I'm going to click on all the key, and I'm going to move this object from a position A to position B. And now we can see that this will allow us to actually create and a really nice consistent movement for our objects. Uh, this type of movement is best to be used for fans, um, some kind of um, machines. It's just going to be easier to control because motion blur is also going to be highly connected to the speed of your object as well of the, as, uh, the shatter speed. Uh, so now let's see um, this movement of the person. As you can see, well, uh, it's a little bit more elaborate. Um, if you want to learn how to create this kind of animation uh, really uh, quickly without any effort with almost any character, um, you can visit our website, that's visacademy.co.uk, and there we're going to put a separate uh, tutorial on two versions or two options that you can explore to get a very similar effects. Now let's get into our actual actual work. How do we set up Corona to work with motion blur? Since we've got animation, it's going to be a little bit easier. Now let's create Corona camera. I obviously already have one in my scene. So I'm just going to select it. With having this camera selected, I'm going to quickly jump to its options. As we're going to mostly need only the shatter speed, which by default is going to be set to 50. And we're going to also need this depth of field and motion blur tab. Here, we're going to select the geometry. Uh, geometry is going to allow you to uh, inform Corona that uh, your scene may may have uh, some kind of movement in it, some kind of animation, and that some geometry is going to have motion, it may or may not actually have it. So uh, we're going to try to find it by clicking geometry, we're going to be able to really try to look for it. Now you can see that when I turn on my rendering, and um, the same thing as uh, during our presentation happens, all of the movement that I was talking about is really visible. What is also a great element here is that um, because this natural movement, we can also see that in different positions, different parts are going to be blurred out. Uh, that also elim eliminates the whole need of uh, doing something like this, where you can clearly see that now those people and those cars are just unrealistic. They I just don't know how to um, better describe it than just fake. And we don't want to create fake stuff. We want to be, uh, create something that's going to be photorealistic. Okay, so this lady looks quite good. But what if I really want to create those nice streak uh, streaks effects that you can see here that um, those people are going to be more of a ghost than a than a person? Well, this is when our shutter speed is going to come in handy. First, we're going to lower the value to 25 instead of 50. What's going to happen is that most of the parts of our object uh, are going to be pretty much blurred out. Now let's go for some kind of critical value, uh, something around two, you can see that this person is now pretty much ghosting. 
we can see that, well, this is not really what we're looking for because, well, us being at the end of our animation, this pretty much didn't allow us to get the right effect. So uh, now when we have this uh, value, this is the ghosting effect that most of you are looking for. Now let's set it to five. Again, it's more realistic. We can read the posture of this person. And this is the value that I really like to use. Uh, something in between five and 20 is typically my uh, sweet spot. But uh, what I would really recommend to you, whenever you will be creating animation like this, make sure to blur out the person just 5% more than you need. Why? Because if the person's uh, quality, and I mean just the model, is going to be slightly lower than expected, it's going to be easier for you to hide the imperfections because of the amount of blur. Okay, so we now know the basics. We know how to create animation. We know how to really turn off the motion blur. But how do we actually get to this point? Well, we obviously need to place the object in our scene because that's going to be extremely important to actually have our <clears throat> our motion. Uh, what is also important is that you place your camera in the position where you need it. But at the same time, you need to keep in mind that uh, our motion needs to take place. So you want to place your um, keyframes or just uh, your zipper here, uh, somewhere in the mid motion. So you can actually read it um, when you actually uh, start rendering. So now let's start our interactive render. Let's see how uh, this person behaves. And let's try a little bit more options in the in an interior. As you can see, I've got my uh, scene pre prepared. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit easier for us. Uh, now we're working on physical materials uh, from the newest version of Corona. So uh, pretty much pretty neat effects that we're going to uh, go in uh, go over in detail uh, during our course. And uh, now we can pretty much just set the sweet values between five and 20. Uh, so in this case, I think that I'm going to go down to five once more uh, to see how the person really behaves. And from what I can see, this is going to be the type of ghosting that you typically want for your interior. But uh, because this um, interior uh, pretty much allows us to uh, show a little bit more and the composition works all together uh, quite neatly, I'm going to go up again to something around 13, 14, just as uh, we started previously. <clears throat> Uh, typically, when you will be uh, trying to create the motion blur effect, you have to keep in mind that uh, your camera is not going to create any kind of effect unless you animate it and uh, you ask it to. So now I also created the second camera. So uh, it's going to be exactly the same uh, setup. But the difference is that our camera is also animated. It follows our character from uh, left to right. Now we're going to see how it works pretty much the same way. The movement is very subtle, but it's there. Uh, the difference between those two cameras when I select it is that not only my uh, camera, but also geometry option is on. The difference is that when only geometry is on, we're only going to see this one character, which is animated, being blurred out. If we turn on and only the camera, um, absolutely everything is going to be blurred out uh, because now the geometry movement is going to be ignored and treated as stationary. But if we turn on both of the options, we're going to see that we are now following this woman and we can get those really neat shots. To be honest, this, um, this option should be mostly used for some kind of uh, car movement, a person riding a bike, maybe a runner. Uh, but in this case, I just wanted to show you uh, a pretty neat example on how to use motion blur in 3ds Max using Corona Renderer. I hope that you learned something that is going to be valuable. And remember, uh, try to avoid adding those people that go into warp speed. They look really, really bad. 
So thank you again, subscribe to our channel and see you in the next video quite soon. Bye bye.